This week on GamePro News, we finally find out just which games we will be playing when the PlayStation Vita launches around the world in February, and there are a couple of surprises. An egg-shaped adventurer makes his way to mobile handsets, while Apple signs a deal to allow subscription-based gaming on iOS. Id Software fulfills its promise to release the Doom 3 source code, but Ubisoft sticks to its promise that I Am Alive will not arrive on PC. South Korean law kicks young gamers off the internet overnight, and the world's most popular MMO celebrates its seventh birthday. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. Sony this week finally revealed what we will be playing when the PlayStation Vita arrives in February around the world. There are some traditional franchises like Mod Nation Races, Road Trip, Uncharted, Golden Abyss, Hustle Kings, Top Darts, Everybody's Golf, and Wipeout 2048. Then there are a handful of new titles that Sony has already been promoting, including Reality Fighters, Escape Plan, Gravity Rush, and Little Deviants. But there are also two shiny new games fresh from Sony Studios. Back in the day, the PlayStation 3 launched with the original MotorStorm, so it's only fitting that the Vita gets its own version. And like the relationship between the home console and the handheld, this one has been scaled down to suit no more race cars. Instead, you will be racing via remote control in MotorStorm RC. Relationship doesn't stop there. If you pick up the PS3 version as well, both versions for one price, you will be able to move seamlessly between the two. Unit 13, on the other hand, is an all-new third-person military shooter from SOCOM developers Zipper Interactive. It promises portable play designed for adventuring on the go and a non-linear mission structure so you don't have to play through from start to finish. And that lineup is just the games from Sony. There are plenty of others on the way from third party publishers, including Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, Activision, Capcom, Sega, and 2K Games. This, alongside the news that Sony is partnering with Vodafone for its 3D connectivity in Australia, New Zealand, and a large chunk of Europe, it looks like all the ducks are in a row for launch come February. Also all organised for launch are Codemasters, who has confirmed that everybody's favourite egg venturer is making a comeback with the mobile gaming release of Dizzy, Prince of the Yoke Folk, due for December. Dizzy was the star of one of the most popular European computer game series of the late 80s, early 90s, which enjoyed significant success on home computers including the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. Now he's headed for both iOS and Android devices, both of which were mere sparkles in a programmer's eye back when the series was first released 20 years ago. And that's not the only big announcement for mobile gaming this week either. Apple has revealed plans for subscription gaming on iOS. The plan will see developers able to charge a monthly fee for their games, with Apple taking a 30% commission. Everyone will be keeping a close eye on this one to see how the proposed deal takes off in a world where more and more subscription-based games are turning to a free-to-play model funded by microtransactions. A perfect illustration, DC Universe Online, which went free-to-play at the beginning of the month and has since seen 1 million extra players jumping online. Even more impressive, revenues have skyrocketed 700%. Tis the season, apparently, and while we're in a celebrating mood, let's raise a glass for the guys at id Software. They, after a brief legal hiccup over a late 90s patent, have just released the source code for Doom 3. Back when the game was originally released in 1999, id founder John Carmack developed a 3D shading technique that became known as Carmack's Reverse. 
Unfortunately for him, Creative Labs also created the same shading technique and the software company got in with the patent first. At the time, it simply licensed the patent from Creative, but that solution won't fly when you're releasing the actual code, so after a decade, Carmack took Doom 3 back to the drawing board to make some very minor essential changes. How minor? Carmack explains the workaround adds four lines of code and changes two. That's it. The source code, all 10 megabit, has now been freely released and is ready to download in the GamePron file library. Something not worth celebrating is the fact that I Am Alive will not be coming to PC. The game, long in development, is currently scheduled for release sometime next year as a downloadable title for both Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. This week, the game's creative director, Stanislas Metra, has explained that despite PC gamers bitching about not getting their own version, the developers aren't planning on porting the game to the home computer. The reason? Piracy. Metra explains that even if it only takes a tiny team to port the game to PC, he doesn't believe enough people are going to pay for the exercise to be worth it. On the surface, a Cinderella law sounds quite charming, but the reality is anything but fun. That's the fairy tale nickname given to a new piece of South Korean legislation which applies a curfew to the internet in a move designed to prevent the online gaming addiction which runs rampant through many Asian countries. As of November 20th, gamers younger than 16 are officially locked out of online gaming providers between the hours of midnight and 6am, and those providers are already struggling with the necessary changes. While Sony has banned under-16s from signing up to the PlayStation Network or from playing online overnight, Microsoft seems a little less certain of its next move. Granted a two-month grace period, the Xbox Live provider is currently tracking gamers' ages in order to block the young'uns, but if this proves to be too complex or too easily worked around, Microsoft may simply turn off the Xbox Live network in South Korea between the hours of 12 and 6. And finally this week, another historic game celebrated its birthday. World of Warcraft has officially turned 7 in style, and Blizzard invited a very special guest to the party. Chuck Norris is a hunter, but Chuck Norris does not hunt. Hunting would imply the possibility of failure. There are 10 million people in the world of Warcraft because Chuck Norris allows them to live. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this game. I can't really follow on from Chuck Norris, so rather than trying to compete, I'll just let you know that if you log into World of Warcraft between November 20th and December 3rd, you will receive a feat of strength for your achievements and a celebration package containing a birthday tabard, 7% experience and a reputation gain bonus, and some sparkly fireworks. Make sure you observe all goblin and gnome fire hazard warnings and celebrate responsibly. That brings us to the end of Season 2 of GamePron News. As always, we've got a few surprises and special features tucked up our sleeves to show off before a big 2012, so you should stick around to make sure you don't miss anything. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or Blip TV, follow us on Twitter or be our friend on Facebook, or you can simply point your browser to GamePron.com, which will still be regularly updated with games news, reviews and the other bits and pieces we find interesting. Thank you to Al, Andrew, Brenna, Chad, Eeyore, Jamie, Josh, Matt, Orkchop, Rowan and Timmy for their contributions to the site over the past 12 months, Elroy Online for his design work and support, Remain Calm for the awesome GamePro News theme music, and the wonderful Punkly for his tireless efforts behind the scenes, behind the camera and behind the editing desk. Also, we would like to thank you for watching, reading, commenting, retweeting and giving us the occasional thumbs up. I know it's a ridiculous cliche, but really we couldn't have done half the things we have done without you. So, until next year, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is GamePro News.